Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled. I am Peter, that is Tara, and we are going to talk about the chilling adventures of Sabrina. Chapter 19 is called The Mandrake. So, full spoilers for the episode as always. And this episode was essentially invasion invasion of the body snatchers, kind of, but just with one character. Yep. <laughs> Almost more. Which it was funny because I was thinking this is very invasive of the body snatchers, and then they actually did the, the reference where Sabrina goes, ah, Yeah, with the yeah. pointing. And I was like, <laughs> okay, they know. Yeah, they know. They know what they're doing. Okay, it's fine. That's fine. <laughs> um, so the kids are basically trying to figure out that's you know, the the mural, the the prophecy, what's going on with Sabrina. There's some uh, male ego competition between Nick and, and Harvey. And it's mostly coming mm-hmm. from Nick. Like, Harvey doesn't seem to be being a dick. It's just Nick who's like, oh. Uh, well, g- Harvey's moved on. Good good point, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey's um, moved on, you know? He doesn't mm. have that jealousy anymore. That's true. Uh, although Roz did have a problem with um, the, 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 if you ever love me, Sabrina, you'll come down from there. <laughs> I thought maybe she would last week too. Yeah. I was thinking, or last week, last episode. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that she would have an issue with that. Yeah. Because it is a very personal thing to say. It is. But he, he then says he loves her and they kiss. And it's like a sweet enough moment. And I was like, okay, sure. Go for it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily love the relationship, but it's not bugging me either. So. Well, I just know that it's. I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm not totally bought into it because I just think that it's not going to work out. <laughs> Eventually, it's going to be Harvey and Sabrina again. Yes, I think I think we all feel that a little bit. It's just hard for me. Yeah, it's hard for me to totally invest in them, which is unfortunate. Mm. Yeah, but hey, so Sabrina, upon realizing that she's the the herald of the apocalypse, basically, you know, they, they, they're, they're talking about okay, how can we stop me starting the apocalypse? Well we could take away these new powers. If I, I actually love, because they go to see Wardwell, and I actually love Wardwell's reaction, because she's not she, she wasn't like around like her the last episode, <laughs> and she was like, oh, I've got yeah. all these new powers, and she's like, oh, what new powers? What new magic? And she's like, well, I can, you know, I can change the weather, I can resurrect people, and I don't think I can die. And this is right after we've heard uh, Lilith talk to like Adam, <laughs> the scarecrow, and be like, you're going to kill Sabrina. And she's like, oh, you can't die. That's That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I did too. I noticed that. Yeah. I also noticed that when uh, Sabrina knocked on the door and said, "Can I come in?" Also, I have Nick with me. And then she Wardwell went for being extremely excited to like, "Oh, I can't do it with Nick around," <laughs> which is I thought was kind of odd. Like, why not just take both of them out? Suspicious, I guess. <laughs> so they're both dead. <laughs> I guess. I don't but know. <laughs> that's like her only goal, anyway, right? Is to just be rid of. Sabrina and I wonder uh, what our plan is to like because if, if Sabrina does get killed, let's say she's super successful, like mm-hmm. how would the Dark Lord, like, the Dark Lord would be on to her, right? He would assume that it was her. Yeah, but I mean, I I sort of bought into the idea that that she will, um, she's she's doing it as a revenge thing, and if it ends her life as well, then so be it. Yeah, but. I don't understand why Nick being there would stop her from doing it. Because she if thinks that, if, she thinks that Nick being with her means that they can take her. Like she can't just win. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I'm, 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 we'll I don't know if that's a good answer. I'm just trying to explain it. But <laughs> we we have that. So 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 Sabrina goes to to Ambrose about taking away her magic, but it does mean that she'll she'll lose all of her abilities. She'll lose her witchhood essentially, and she'll become just mortal. But she's willing to do that to save the world. And Nick's really upset because she doesn't, he doesn't want her to become mortal. But she's like, no, no, if this saves the world, this is a worldly sacrifice. Uh, and I am half mortal, so it's not like I'm completely new to this. <laughs> it's like, yeah, fine. So basically they do this thing where like they have to, you know, it's the, the mandrake. They, like she does this ritual, Ambrose is there, and like a new version of her spouts out of the the mandrake but it obviously we find out later that because they, they wake up thinking nothing's happened that it didn't work and it turns out that the mandrake did spout a sabrina twin but and she has all of her powers but she kind of swapped the mandrake around with a fresh one so then snuck off and so we have this the main chunk of the episode is this 
cheery Sabrina who's going around and as soon as someone displeases her she captures them knocks them out and then plants them next to another mandrake so that she can grow new versions of her friends that'll be that'll go along with the whole new plan the whole new identity of like we're all just happy cheery friends she tries yeah. to kiss harvey who rightfully resists and says no i'm with the rose now what are you doing sabrina we're not we're not that anymore uh she she's really cruel to theo especially like i mean i mean she doesn't think she's being cruel but she is like she's been really nasty yeah. uh and you say oh i can fix you i can make you a boy i can make you a real boy those kind of sentences and uh yeah. and Rose... And Theo was like, no, I like my, I am a boy. Like, this is yeah. enough. I don't need a, a boy's body to know that I'm a boy. And then Roz doesn't really quite fall for it. Roz thinks of something up and intentionally touches her to get a vision. And is like, you're not Sabrina. So, which I like because when they all wake up in the forest and they run from, like, evil Sabrina, I like that immediately Roz is like, no, it's not actually her. We don't have to be mad at Sabrina and go through the, oh, can we trust Sabrina plot again? I'm glad yeah. that it was just quickly, right. just, no, we know it's not her. It's fine. Uh, and then eventually, of course, Sabrina finds out and we... For some reason, like, the, the plan to solve this the dispute between them like, about which one gets to live, it's like, not magical, we'll do it fair. So, a, a duel <laughs> at, at 10 paces. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's okay. It kind of reminds me of, like, when we have conversations... Um, about like who would win in a fight batman versus superman but like all their powers are taken away (laughs) and in order to make it a fair fight or something and who would win you're like well batman would clearly win because superman would just be a regular dude but i I don't know that's what it kind of reminded me of have you ever had those conversations before (laughs) i am of a higher class nerd thank you very much i do not need to have such (laughs) <laughs> pandering conversations that the mere mortals would have <laughs> right well obviously batman would win but... <laughs> i mean obviously that's what, that's why you don't talk about it there's no point in talking about it of course batman yeah, would obviously, win. with or without powers batman wins but... <laughs> oh you're upsetting people now um <laughs> So, so we have this duel, but of course, in the meantime, one of the things that happens is that the, the Scarecrow Adam actually attacks Sabrina, Nick fends him off, and Sabrina basically realizes because the prophecies, like, to you know, to start the apocalypse, Sabrina has to go through all these, like, uh, all, all the, the miracles, right? And it's like, mm-hmm. it goes all the way back to season one or part one, where she did the exorcism, and then of resurrecting Harvey's brother, curing the blind, all that stuff. And it's like, wait, Wardwell made me do all those. So finally, this is the episode where Sabrina realizes that Wardwell's been playing against her. And they go and mm-hmm. confront her. And Nick holds her kind of captive with a magic spell. Uh, but they realize that like what she's doing now, where she's going to kill this doppelganger, is actually the final prophecy. It's the final miracle. It's where she's kind of killing herself, and that's kind of the opposite of sacrifice. Uh, so we end the episode with literal lightning striking and like, nah, the darkness is coming. Like, we're, we're, it's, it's the darkest possible moment, right? We're getting into the finale where yeah. evil is coming. And I don't know how we're going to get around it, how we're going to stop it, but I'm sure we'll all think of something. But that's that's where we leave off. We only have one episode left to figure it out. That's true. Unless they just end us in a cliffhanger, in which case we'll come back for part three. <laughs> we'll oh, see do you how think it goes. they'll do that? Do you think they'll do part three and it's still a continuation of this same epic storyline i kind of hope not i hope we get because I, I feel like they can wrap this up to a point in one episode yeah. if they're doing it as like wardwell is the main villain of part one and part two and also blackwood and the like a sub villain mm. then you know that it would wrap up neatly and be like a two-parter opening for whatever the next season is yeah um so I, I like where it ends. I like the if it does feel suitably dark and it feels like we're building up to a finale. I don't know if I enjoyed mm-hmm. this episode as much as some of the other ones though this season. I think um, it just wasn't as engaging. Even though I did kind of enjoy Kieran Shipka playing the opposite Sabrina, the the, the yeah, one. Yeah, I thought, I thought her good. performance was really good. I really liked it. It was a uh, it was very um, scary innocent mm. <laughs> that you get from like kid horror. Yeah, um, it reminded me actually, we've been reviewing Twilight Zone, the classic stuff, and we've not gotten to the episode yet, but it made me think of an episode of Twilight Zone, actually. The one where the kid's in control of everyone? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And That's in the movie, too. And everything's all happy, but at any point, that kid could just kill us all. 
<laughs> yeah. And there is a really good scene in this where uh, where she does. She like mm. those four Judas cult people will, uh, was approaching her and then she just made it all of their neck snap and it was really grotesque. Yeah, that, that, uh, that we should mention Blackwood Sentinels. Like Blackwood's at the point now where he's setting hit squads to kill Sabrina. That's where we are <laughs> with, with him. Yeah. Um, then we'll get to the rest of his stuff, obviously. But <laughs> yeah, they, they show up and like it, it turns out to be this this you know, copy of Sabrina and she just, yeah, snaps all their necks. Just, she actually does like the Wonder Woman. She does, like, she does this. She does the Wonder Woman pose. Yeah. And then that makes all their necks snap. Okay. <laughs> it's a cool shot. It was a cool shot, yeah. Because like, they show like the bone and the blood coming out of the neck. I was like, ugh. <laughs> and then you were like, yeah. Yeah, give me more. Mel. So Mel. Yeah. Now you brought up uh, Invasion of the Body Snatcher. I kind of got a vibe of like a Terminator vibe a little bit in this. Just the idea of Judgment Day being unavoidable. Like no matter how, how they try to avoid it, they end up causing it. <laughs> August something 1997 i'm trying to remember the date of judgment day from terminator 2 i can't remember it it was see in the old dvd that you could unlock like a set uh, a, a a third cut of the movie by putting in the date that mm-hmm. the movie like not the movie came out but the date that judgment day was supposed to happen you would lock unlock the ultimate cut um what yeah it was a whole, it was a whole thing um so i used to know that date off the top of my head just because you had to put it in the dvd <laughs> it was an easter egg i didn't know the day i didn't remember but um I, I just had, I don't know, I, I thought of Judgment Day because they keep trying to avoid the apocalypse or this prophecy, but by avoiding it, they ended up um, causing it. So what you're saying is, is the next episode is going to end with Wardwell going into lava with a thumb, sacrificing herself to stop the apocalypse. I mean, if the writers know what they're doing, then yeah, <laughs> they'll end it that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be Adam because he's, dead yeah. that was short she, she, she's going to be all i can't self-terminate <laughs> i've went really scottish all of a sudden but that's okay <laughs> it would I'll be consistent it, i've been pretending <laughs> <laughs> i hear it all the time actually it was, it was when sabrina knocks on the door and she's just it's when she shouts i'll be a minute i just like that was just full scottish there was no, no even attempt at an american accent there <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've been noticing more and more too. I think it's hard to shout in a different accent as well. I think that that is even harder. Like I can say, "I'll be a minute," but "I'll be a minute." Like, see, I just I went Scottish. <laughs> I was trying my best to like hide the Scottish, and I just couldn't do it. Arguably, I didn't do a good job, and I said it either. But like, I, I felt like I did. I felt like I did a better job. <laughs> it was it was alright. I still got the the min apostrophe ut <laughs> instead of minute. <laughs> minute minute mm. minute <laughs> yeah we can work on it later minute <laughs> um so yeah so we should talk about blackwood stuff because he actually takes his doctrine out and says we're going to operate this skill under my doctrine then we're, we're no longer the church of night we're the, ch- the church of judas or, or whatever got a new statue in fact i laughed mm-hmm. at i forgot to mention this but when the statue exploded like two episodes ago I was like, huh. I don't think they did that because of the lawsuit, but I think it's funny to think that when they were... They were having, I did think about that. Yeah. When they were fighting yeah. it, they're like, hey, it's going to be destroyed by the end of like the next part. Can you just... Because they filmed all one big chunk, so they, they, they knew they were doing this. Yeah. I assume that was like maybe what sugar-coated that a little bit. <laughs> It'll be gone. Um, were you expecting a statue of Blackwood? Because I was. I was. I totally was. <laughs> if I, see, when they pulled off the cloak, I was like... That doesn't look that much like Blackwood. That's a shit statue. And then it's, it's Judas. I'm yeah. like, oh, it's Judas. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, but yeah, so, so, and they get hands out of the rule book, the, 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 the Judas rule book. And obviously no one's got time to read it yet. And it's not until Prudence comes into his office later and says, hey, this has got some troubling elements in here. It says that um, uh, we're not allowed to, like, you know, apply for the higher, like, magic arts, you know, the, basically the, the further education, you know, the, you know, magic university or whatever. And mm-hmm. we're not allowed to do this, this, and this. But that only applies to the witches, not the warlocks. And straight up, Blackwood's like, yes, yes, witches should be focusing on more feminine arts, like, uh, uh, what was it said? Oh, like, uh, herbology. Herbology, it's yeah, a, was it? Yeah. Um, and... And and Prudence almost because Prudence obviously by the end of the episode decides to go against Blackwood, but she goes like almost full villain here because she's almost willing to like sell out every other woman in the place, f- just as long as she's exempt from these rules. 
She's like, yeah. but I'm exempt from these, aren't I, Dad? And he's like, of course, you're a blackwood. You're exempt from this. If you if you hold this up and convince all the other ladies here to obey the rules, you're exempt. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm like, don't do it, Prince. Don't don't sell them all out. Fight back, yeah. fight. Uh, and it's not until he, because because basically Prince turns in in Zelda for for sneaking around and trying to help people, and she gives him back the baby, the daughter. And Blackwood's mm-hmm. like, yeah, when they, they turn 16, when they're of age, you know, young Judas will kill Judas to, like, cement the Blackwood line. And this is the point where... Oh, pr- really? I thought it was, like, a, a marriage thing. I didn't get that. You thought it was marriage? I thought I thought it meant kill. I thought I assumed that's what you meant. Hmm. I don't know. I'll have to revisit it before we watch the next mm-hmm. episode. So I'm not sure. Maybe it, Maybe it was sacrifice. I thought it was, like, they'll be joined, like, in marriage, like a incestuous kind of thing because i think that's why because uh, he said pure the bloodline right like like the way old royalty used to do it yeah i think i'm sure that's why zelda wanted to hide the baby last season is because she knew that's what would happen is that the baby would be in danger yeah yeah i i think that's true uh that zelda thought that but i thought that blackwood said um i thought he said like marriage but <laughs> i mean also horrific uh also horrific you're right absolutely uh but prudence does not like hearing this and decides to let zelda out um but yeah so yeah he's been straight up full like patriarchy and control like yeah, these are the rules now i'm sending out hit squads for sabrina you know the whole whole shebang it's the, that's what that's what he's doing now so we get two big things to deal with next episode we have we have blackwood taking over the school and enforcing all these rules and we also have the dark lord coming to cause the apocalypse i think if there's a complaint here you have between these two plots is that one feels is as bad as what blackwood is doing is the dark lord coming to start the apocalypse and enslave all of both humankind and witchkind seems like a bigger deal that needs to be dealt with immediately <laughs> agreed yeah. but i do want to see blackwood get his comeuppance oh, sure. hopefully through prudence and zelda yeah actually joe was a really uh out of nowhere plot for me this episode was hilda goes to the council hilda. to to ask them to deal with blackwood and they're like ah oh, he can you know, run his church as he, as he pleases and hilda kind of sticks up for everyone and says no 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 you're just gonna let this slide because you know he's got dirt on you and you're you know turning a blind eye and later on the head council dude comes to see her and I was like, really like, wait, where's this going? Because he starts touching her leg and going, oh, show me how passionate you are about, you know, fixing this. And I'm like, this is like out of nowhere. Yeah, very out of nowhere. I mean, I, I'm sure they were trying to make a point about, you know, women struggling in a workplace or going to a boss or figure. Uh, but it's it's a little bit lost because it's just kind of, all right. It, it, feels, <laughs> it just seems kind of out of nowhere. <laughs> it feels kind of tacked on here, and it's especially weird because I feel like the themes of this show have been dealing with misogyny so much that I don't know if it needed yeah. this extra like slice of it like right here at the end out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, a little bit odd. Well, anyway, he's dead now, so <laughs> we'll see what the consequences are for that. Yeah, I will admit, I did chuckle, though, when she opened the door. When Zelda gets back to the house and Hilda opens and says, like, but you killed so-and-so. And she's like, he got a bit handsy. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, I guess it was death by spider webs? Yeah. I am I am glad that she killed him. I do like the, the idea that, like... Because you, you, you think of Hilda as being this sort of timid character, right? I like the mm-hmm. idea that she did just kill him for her. Like, no, how dare you? Yeah, Death. I like that they remind <laughs> us that she's actually a monster also. <laughs> <laughs> they did that a couple of episodes ago with the with the arsenic cookies. That was pretty good. Yeah, the, the cyanide. Cookies. Yeah, yeah, that was good. <laughs> no, um, I'm liking this little almost sub not a subplot, but this little sub characteristic of Helda that they, they keep just you know just giving us a little bit of. You know, she can get dark yeah. if she needs to get dark to defend herself. She'll she'll do it. Right. It's she'll it's good it. that they remind us though because she's always like the cheerful one of the of the episode. Like she's always the one who is saying the right things and is just happier and jollier and then it's like oh yeah you can kind of forget that she's a witch yeah she yeah. never really uses magic either in the show it's just sabrina really she has a lot of the horrible stuff she seems to always know the ingredients and helps make potions and things like that but she never really does yeah mm-hmm. just straight up magic um yeah so. i did like also um in the the i guess nick his 
reaction from the beginning to Sabrina going full mortal was like he was just mortified by the idea. Hmm. Um, he sort of came around by the end, but I don't know. I'm still sort of suspicious of Nick. He's either, I think the writers are either setting him up to betray Sabrina in some way, or he's going to die. Yeah, it's not notably he's not a regular. Yeah. So you know, that could. Well, uh, I don't think he has anyway. Also, they keep like, uh, he's just too perfect a lot of the times. Mm-hmm. Well, Nicholas Scratch is a name for Satan, right? That's like a, that's a thing. I don't know. I think I saw some comment about that a while back, but I don't really, I didn't look into it, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you're old, but you're not that old. <laughs> I'm not Methuselah old. No. <laughs> <laughs> you and Lilith weren't, you know, buddies back in the dawn of time. Yeah. <laughs> just, just checking. Just checking. <laughs> Um, if you want to know about the plague, though, I can tell you. <laughs> I've seen some shit. That, uh, that's why 2001 is <laughs> your favorite movie, because you, you watch that opening with the, the, the apes and the, the monolith, and you're like, oh, this takes me back. My brothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me tell you about the monolith. Everyone gather around the campfire, kiddies. I'll tell you about the monolith. Um, Everyone bring your own club bone. <laughs> Oh uh, dear, you're like four years older than me. This, this is what's really funny about this. Is it's, just, it's not even a generational difference. You still said too much. <laughs> People don't need to know my age. <laughs> yeah, if I tell them my age now, they know how old you are. <gasps> don't do it. <laughs> I'm 52. Anyway, so that Damn is. It. <laughs> That is uh, I mean, that's basically the episode. Like, I thought I thought it was solid. Like, I liked most of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think what what's what almost hurts it a little bit is that I think we had like a really good like triple set of episodes in the middle. Like, I think like four, five, and six were really good. Yeah, I think it's just unfortunate that they set up a lot of really cool things and then they, you think it's going to continue for a whole season and then they just the next episode is over. Like the Adam stuff was really short. And then the yeah. Adam Resurrection stuff was just an episode. Yeah, and it's it was like, gone. It's kind of it's kind of like a double edged sword because on the one hand, I like that they're not like dragging things out, but there's definitely some things you're like, I could have I could have had that for a few episodes. I could I could have done a three episode thing. Yeah, like they introduced the Frank and Adam in like the end of one episode, and then he's dead by the end of this one it just seems uh not even the end it's like halfway through the episode which is the, the surprising thing because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> i i thought there was going to be some sort of fun thing where the assassins from from blackwood and the the, the scarecrow adam would have been mm-hmm. like you know like they'd both try and kill at the same time and it would cause chaos or something i don't know like yeah but it, 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 it almost felt like the episode didn't even acknowledge the fact that there was multiple assassins been sent after at the same time it just happened at different different points yeah and even like the the um, missionary slash angel storyline, I guess that was just a you know a villain of the night <laughs> episode in, instead of uh, something that would pay off later on. But I was kind of expecting more of an arc of that to continue too. I think we'll get more of that. I think the idea of like having like angel villains, I think that's something they could really expand upon in like a future mm-hmm. season. Now that they've set it up, was the idea that yeah, there's this whole light side of like warriors that might come and try and fight. Like, um, I could see there been something, something there. I hope uh, so because I really do like the things that they've set up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think we typically have some critiques and some nitpicks, but I feel like for the most part, the season's done a pretty good job of introducing I agree. good ideas, paying off a lot yeah. of them. Characters have still been mostly fun to be around. Uh, you know. I think, I think even when it's like smaller characters like you know like Roz arguably doesn't get that whole much to do but she, I like the actress well enough every time she's around she's mm-hmm. kind of pleasant to have around so and, and so on yeah she's a really great actress I've been enjoying her storyline too um, with the exception of the Harvey stuff I think I mean they're they're both doing the best that they can mm. with what they're given but I think it just hurts from the fact that we know it's not going to last yeah um and even if and if they do write it off as something that goes for the rest of the series it'll be a surprise and i'll probably always be skeptical yeah 
to be expected. Unfortunately. I did laugh twice, so there's two good scenes in this episode where Theo's with them and reacts. The first one is when yeah. Roz brings up the whole, what he said to Sabrina last episode, and Theo's just like, yeah, I'm going to go, I'm guys. Out. And, like, Harvey's trying to grab him, like, you know, stay, Theo, stay. Don't let me take this alone. <laughs> and then later on, when, after they've made up, and Roz says, oh, you said I love you, and I want to say it back in case we die. Uh, I love you too, Harvey. And they start making out just there at the table, and the camera just, like... Theo's just, like, the third wheel. Just sitting there, like, just, just casually sipping his drink, like... This is awkward. <laughs> As you do. Um, I also like the joke where Harvey says, uh, I'm never going to eat a vegetable again. And Theo's like, you ate vegetables before? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that, that team. They're they're all pretty good together. Yeah. And I like the amount of them that we've been getting this season too. I think it's... Overall, I'm, I am very positive about the show. And I'm excited to see where the next episode, or how it ends. Um, I think the best part of this one, though, was just... Uh, I can't... How do you say her name? The actress who plays Sabrina? Uh, Kiernan Shipka. Kiernan Shipka. I thought she really brought it this episode. Well, she, she was did. really great. She was really good. Yeah. I loved the, the doppelganger version of her. Yeah. Something that happened a few times on the hit television show Buffer the Vampire Slayer, which I think is relevant to, to compare this to a lot of time. A, because it's supernatural and you've got this lead, you know, teenage girl character, but um, mm-hmm. even just what you were saying about the, the group, you know, the you know Harvey and Theo and Ross, like they're a Scooby gang, like Buffy, and like if they become more of yeah. a Scooby gang, I'm totally into that. And yeah, so it happened in the Wish and Doppelgangland. It was a great episode of Angel with some body swapping and duplicates. There's... I mean, I just watched the original Sabrina shows, and there's mm. a doppelganger Sabrina that's the evil version of her. So, oh, of course, there was. Of course, there was. Um, yeah. I will say that now that we're ending the, the season, though, uh, ending the part, it does kind of feel like even though part one did have kind of something that felt like a finale in the way it was structured mm-hmm. it does feel like this was one twenty episode batch it was one big season really overall yeah and i hope part three or season three whatever they decide on is more of that scooby gang mm-hmm. i, I want to see them all together and i want more salem i need more cat yeah I, i'm kind of hoping that the the the, the, the school like I, I hope what they do to shake things up is that the the, the the church and night school gets destroyed and they have to integrate all the magic students into like uh, not Riverdale at uh, Greendale High and but they all have to pretend to be mortal they all have to pretend to be mortal like and that's how you shake things up or at the very least have Sabrina be there more often so that we can get that Scooby Gang sort of stuff um, yeah I like that idea I'd be down for that but we'll find out we'll find out what the uh, the finale brings next time so uh, we'll see you in a couple of days for that look forward to it let us know what you thought of this episode in the comments below like subscribe all that stuff get us on the twitters at mailed underscore fudge for channel updates if you want to support the show Tara where can, where can you do that? You go to patreon.com slash mildfuzztv where you can donate a dollar and get bonus episodes of the Screams After Midnight and our show The Ace which is a science fiction movie reviewed show um, it's up now. Patreon voted, people get uh, get it a week early though. <laughs> <laughs> Almost nailed it. I think at one point you said a uh, movie reviewed show. I'm sure you said that. Did I say that? I, 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 is that not what it is? <laughs> there was like an extra sound at the end of the review that I wasn't quite anticipating on, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get it. I should really practice this since you're going to make me do it every time. Not every time. I've been sort of hit and miss with when I make you do it. Just, just for fun. I know. Keep you on your toes. I'm just waiting to see my reaction if I'm, do you know funny? If I'm cringing or not. I don't really do it with the others because, you know, I've been doing this with, enough, with them for long enough now that I just don't, I don't see the point. But right. I'm new, so I'm easy to pick on. <laughs> that would be partly, partly true, yes. Um, but I, I think it's good for your, your confidence to get used to saying, like, the, the outro and stuff like that even okay. even if you never actually end up doing it like on a regular basis or maybe i'll make you do it on the ace since that's you you co you co-created that show maybe that'll be your that is my show <laughs> our show it is our show our show check it out <laughs> yes if you enjoy our banter uh, you can check out the ace the atomic cinema experiment um either on the audio feed that's on itunes and all that or you can get it on youtube of course where all, all of our stuff is uh, but otherwise that is us guys so thank you once again for watching and listening we always appreciate it keep watching TV have you got any vanilla <laughs>